said I'm a crush it. Call me the golden boy. Welcome to Unsung, the nonprofit news magazine show. I'm your host, Anthony Walker. In this episode, we're coming to you from First Side Park in beautiful downtown Pittsburgh. As you can tell by my attire, the weather's starting to change. It's getting a little bit cold out here, but you know what? We're powering through it to bring you this episode from the outdoors. Unsung is about the nonprofits and individuals that are bettering our community. Could we get more unsung than someone who often refers to herself as number two? We put Vivian Lee Croft in the spotlight in this edition. Also, the Pirate Parrot steals the show at the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh in the video submission section. But first, as always, here's what's going on with our area nonprofits. Did you know that breast cancer is the leading cause of death in women ages 25 to 54? Pennsylvania has the fourth highest breast cancer rate in the nation, and over 330 women in Westmoreland County are diagnosed with breast cancer each year. Unsung would like to thank Westmoreland Walks for the above information, and we'd like to take a moment to honor those that fight with the survivor's speech from Cindy Kulikowski. Breast cancer does not define me, but it did refine me. Cancer is not the end, but the beginning of appreciating all the blessings that life has to offer you and meeting very special and caring people along the way. As survivors, we have acquired a perspective that has taught us so much. We encourage you to participate in Breast Cancer Awareness Month by encouraging screenings and raising awareness through social media. October is also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. More information on how you can help yourself, help a friend, or just plain help the cause is available from the Women's Center and Shelter at wcspittsburgh.org. About 4,000 people marched through the streets of Pittsburgh from Freedom Corner in the Hill District to Market Square for a kickoff rally for Occupy Pittsburgh. Prior to leaving Freedom Corner, the group's statement of nonviolence was read to the crowd. There were no incidents of violence, property damage, or any activity which required police intervention, according to both the police and Occupy Pittsburgh organizers. After the permitted event, about a thousand people marched on the sidewalk from Market Square to the occupation site, Mellon Green, at the corner of Grant and 6th Avenue. BNY Mellon has granted the occupiers access to the park, which they own, and give to the community as a public space. The occupation will remain in fact indefinitely. And now let's meet Vivian Lee Croft of Pittsburgh Cares, the Secret Agent L Project, and much more. I'm Vivian Lee Croft and I am the Corporate Programs Coordinator at Pittsburgh Cares. We're a volunteer agency who matches up to 600 nonprofits with corporations, businesses, and individuals. It's a really great organization. I was able to have the opportunity to go down to Haiti and visit with Jamie and Allie Mutri on behalf of their organization, the Haitian Orphan Rescue. And I followed them from 6 a.m. to midnight for five days. Uh, visiting families, talking to uh, members of the community, and working with their children in trying to create a better life for them, a more sustainable life for uh, what they were doing. And while I was there, I took a lot of photos and wrote a lot of information which I posted on a blog. It's mytriptohaiti.wordpress.com. The earthquake a year and a half ago was, of course, immediately devastating, and there are still remnants today. But there are still issues being faced when it comes to health and food and employment. Um, there are many tent cities still in the center of Port-au-Prince. There are many people who don't have running water where they live. There are many people who don't have access to food along the countryside. So their issues are the same and not quite as immediate as they were directly after the earthquake. Um, but things are improving. They're steadily improving every day. And the things that I saw that Jamie and Allie deal with on a daily basis are ways of improving the, the communities and the families. Um, and it's all happening one family at a time. 
a year and a half ago, this issue was on the tip of a lot of people's tongues, and now that time has passed, we think the aid is there, the aid is taking care of everything. We don't need to do anything else, and that's just not true. I mean, with a nation like this, it's very difficult, it's very slow going. There are a lot of people who need a lot of assistance in various forms. So just keeping a conversation going is one of the best ways to help. There are other ways to help. There are a lot of organizations with whom you could get involved. Um, of course, because it's close to my heart, Jamie and Allie McMutri's Haitian Orphan Rescue is a great way to directly impact families, individual families that Jamie and Allie see and help on a daily basis. Families that I met personally who have really found a lot of reward and gained a lot of knowledge and a lot of assistance through the work that Haitian Orphan Rescue does. Um, and of course, um, organizations like the Red Cross and other aid organizations that cater just to Haiti are great ways to help. 144 volunteers stood on the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh's main branch and read for 24 hours straight. The event was called Read Aloud to the People and raised money for our library, our future. Even the Pirate Parrot got in on the act with a great rendition of Casey at the Bat. And when responding to the cheers, do you like the dog in his hat? No stranger in the crowd could tell was Casey at the Bat. 10,000 eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. 10,000 tongues applauded as he wiped them on his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> then while the rival pitcher ground the ball into his hips, defiance gleamed in Casey's eyes as tears curled Casey's blood. <laughs> and now the leather-covered spear came hurtling through the air. And Casey stood a watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball on heated speed. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches, black of people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone on the stand. And it's likely that they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visit shown. He stilled the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the steroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two. Fraud, cried the maddened thousands. An echo entered Fraud. But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face <laughs> turn strong. They saw his muscles strain. And they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. So he got two strikes. He only got one more chance to save the game of the home run. The smear is gone from Casey's lips. His teeth are clenched and teeth. He pounds with full violence, his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. In episode four, we spoke to Jenny Roth about Red Up Thread Up, and now it returns on November 12th and 13th to 2011 at Assemble, a community space for arts and technology, 5125 Penn Ave, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. both days. 
100% of the proceeds of this special edition two-day Red Up Thread Up will go to the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank. Clothing donors are encouraged to submit clothing donations in reusable tote bags or include reusable tote bags in their donation. These will be donated to the Pittsburgh Tote Bag Project. In partnership with the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, participants are encouraged to donate canned goods along with clothing donations. Please visit RedUpThreadUp.com for more information. Join the Pittsburgh Technology Council and the Three Rivers Educational Technology Conference for the free event, Learning Innovation, the Future of Play in Education, on Tuesday, November 15th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Regional Learning Alliance. This unique event features presentations from Diane Roten, the Senior Vice President of Strategy for News Corp, and Andy Russell, the co-founder of Launchpad Toys. Come out and discover the changing landscapes of children's education and find out the new criteria for great kids' products and creative play. Learn about new frontiers in the design process and how leading edge companies are researching play patterns, kid testing, and education technology in general. Don't miss this one-of-a-kind event at the intersection of innovation and education. The North Hills Art Center will hold a homeschool art festival on November 4th. This is a free event for home and cyber school students ages five and up. Students will visit three stations and create three different art projects representing various periods in art from regions around the world. Pizza and drinks included. You must pre-register by calling the Art Center at 412-364-3622 or email office at northhillsartcenter at gmail.com. Deadline for registration is October 31st. Thanks for watching this episode of Unsung. You can check out previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series over at pittsburghonvideo.org. Be sure to leave comments and tell your friends. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. So I said, I'm a crush it. Call me the golden boy, cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I out in a pace car. And these dudes fucking mad cause they can't even find a day job. I stay hard with or without Viagra. And I said, the flow crush like the force of Niagara. I'm after a major label budget, but since I'm not.